Who hasn't shared an amazing science fact about sharks, cats, bats, or other animals only to feel embarrassed later on when you find out that what you just said was wrong? Oh no! Well, fear no more. We're here to put an end to these myths, misconceptions, and inaccuracies about animals that have been passed down through the ages. So come on, let's find out the truth on Wildpedia. Number 1. Sharks can smell a drop of human blood. A swimmer bumps his head and a single drop of blood falls into the water. A few bars of ominous music later, a hungry shark appears to claim its free meal. It's a classic movie scene, but is a shark's sense of smell really that good? Well, not quite in reality. Sharks do indeed have a highly complex and acute sense of smell. Their highly evolved olfactory organs allow them to detect the blood of potential prey, pheromones from a potential mate, or the scent of a predator from a great distance. But for blood to reach the shark's olfactory system, it first has to dissolve and travel through the water, which would take more than a few seconds. As we're not their normal prey, sharks following the scent of blood actually aren't targeting humans. What they're doing is either investigating, or in the case of oceanic white tips and silky sharks, following their instinct to look for thrashing wounded animals they can eat. And some people believe that sharks have developed a taste for human flesh, but this fact is also completely false. For a carnivorous shark to switch to a diet of humans would make very little sense at all. Because not only are we far less common in the oceans than fish, seals, and seabirds, but we also provide much less energy than an insulated animal like a sea lion. Given the low percentage of people who are actually killed in shark attacks, nope. some scientists even argue that we taste bad to sharks. Most bites sharks take out of humans are exploratory, like tasting a sampler platter, and the sharks usually move on when they realize they've mistaken a swimmer for a seal. So, stop being scared when you watch Jaws or The Reef, because sharks aren't what you see in movies. They are nowhere near as fearsome as the movies portray. Too bad that they've been getting some really bad PR from Hollywood. Fish are friends, not food. Number 2. Is hippo milk really pink? The pink hippo milk rumor has been spreading across the web for some time, but it really gained traction in 2013 when National Geographic posted about the hippo's apparently rose-colored milk on Facebook and Twitter. But is hippo milk really pink? The answer is no. Let me explain. Like all mammals, hippos produce white or off-white milk for their young. Despite this fact, it's easy to see where some of the color confusion comes from. Hippos have no actual sweat glands, but their bodies do release an oily secretion frequently referred to as blood sweat. However, despite its name, this secretion is neither blood nor sweat. It's actually a blend of acids. Combined, these two acids play an important role in the hippo's health. This fluid not only functions as a skin moisturizer and a sunscreen and water repellent, but also offers tremendous antibiotic properties to protect hippos from harmful bacteria. That means hippos can live in some pretty toxic spots with minimal risk of infection. Now here is where it gets weird. This special secretion comes out colorless like human sweat, but turns bright orange-red in the sun, making it look like blood. The liquid will then lose its blood-like luster and shift to a dirty brown color later on. But during the period that the hippo's secretions are at their orange-red peak, it's possible that some of it could mix with the milk produced for the baby hippos, giving it a pinkish hue. This explains why people think hippo milk is pink. Reports of actual pink milk have been limited, not only because of the low odds that these two fluids will mingle, but also thanks to the difficulty of getting a close look at the hippo's feeding process, as these animals are extremely aggressive. Despite a lack of evidence to support the pink milk theory, this rumor continues to spread, and tens of thousands of people have liked this fun fact on National Geographic's Facebook page. Now, who wants a strawberry milkshake? 
Number 3. Do mice really love cheese? If you've seen this animated cartoon series, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This has got to be my favorite childhood cartoon and it will forever be near and dear to my heart. But was it actually based on fact? Was Jerry's interest in cheese grounded in reality? Contrary to popular belief, mice really aren't all that crazy about cheese. What? Sure, they might eat it if there's nothing else around, a hungry mouse can't be too picky, but it's far from his favorite food. This myth likely dates back to the Middle Ages. During this period, it is possible that hungry mice simply dug into whatever food they could find, as the food hanging from the ceiling, where people put it to protect it, was hard to reach. Stealing a few morsels from a bag of grains leaves little evidence in many cases, while biting into a hunk of cheese leaves behind telltale teeth marks. This evidence may have spurred the idea that mice love cheese, even if they were only actually eating the cheese because it happened to be accessible. So yeah, the idea of mice loving cheese is largely an image that's been pushed by pop culture, rather than a real phenomenon. Mice enjoy many varieties of food, which may include cheese. However, this isn't an exclusive favorite of theirs in most cases. Number 4. Are dogs colorblind? Humans have three different types of cones in their eyes, and each of them is designed to distinguish a specific wavelength of light. Combined, these three cones allow the average human to distinguish a staggering one million colors or more. Dogs and other mammals are dichromats, which means they have only two types of cones. But this does not mean that they see the world in black and white. It just means that they can distinguish fewer colors than the average human. So don't feel too sorry for your canine companion. Even with just two types of cones in his eyes, he can still see somewhere around 10,000 different shades. Doggy vision is very similar to that of humans with red-green color blindness. They see a rich spectrum of colors, but may mix up shades of red and green, or those with any red or green components, like purple or blue-green. While the average human can see the full spectrum of color from red to violet, a rainbow appears slightly different to dogs. Instead of gradually transitioning from red to orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, a dog's visible color spectrum starts with a deep brown, transitioning into lighter brown, yellow, gray, light blue, and then dark blue. So keep your canine's color capabilities in mind next time you're shopping for their perfect toy. Skip the bright red and stick to colors like blue or yellow that your dog can truly appreciate. So, what do you think of these explanations? Any more animal myths you're curious about? Let us know by commenting down below. And as usual, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss anything from Wildpedia.